Hello Internets. Today, once again, on your fancy electrical lantern box, we're talking about what I consider to be the most underrated, mini-sized software on genetic programming around, TinyGP. In this installment, we're going to talk about the data file which sends the input fields and output target fields into the program. You might recall in our earlier video, we suggested thinking of TinyGP as a box. On the left side of this box, we have a set of numbers which represented the input values for TinyGP. And on the right side of the box, we had a set of target values which represent the desired output for the given inputs. The goal was to find an equation, again called a program, that when the TinyGP software receives the input values, it will give the proper target values as output or something pragmatically close to it. Well, the problem dat file format pretty much follows what you've already seen. There's a header line, but this is followed by two columns of numbers. The left represents the input values for a program, while the right side represents the desired output for the given inputs. Other than the header, each line containing an input target pair is called a fitness case. Now let's take a look at the problem dat header and its constituents. We'll move from right to left. TinyGP has the default name set to problem.dat and the file that comes with it, i.e. the one that is used in the book, happens to have 63 fitness cases, which is indicated by the fifth constituent of the header. So, the first fitness case here is the 0.0, .0 and 0 pair, and the 63rd fitness case is the 6.2 and negative 0 0.083, etc. pair, with the others as labeled. Now consider the next two constituents. These control the lower and upper range of random constants used in the millions of programs being evolved in TinyGP. It is best to think of TinyGP programs as upside down trees, and in those trees are constants. The negative 5 and 5 constituents in the header stipulates that no matter what constants get to appear in a program, they will be no less than negative 5 and no greater than positive 5. Here we see an example of two constants, 2 and negative 3, which fall within the right range and which will get multiplied together. Let's pause for a moment to develop this notion of trees with TinyGP. For example, this figure shows the tree representation of the program 2 times negative 3, that quantity, plus x. Two constants nodes, 2 and negative 3, and one variable node, x, in the program are leaves of the tree. In genetic programming, more generally, they're called terminals, while the arithmetic operators plus and times are internal nodes called functions. The sets of allowed functions and terminals together form the primitive set of a genetic programming system. Here we see plus and times, but there would be other functions allowed as well. And we see 2 and negative 3 and x, but likewise there would be other terminals allowed. Notice also that this tree is actually made up of more than one tree. In more advanced forms of genetic programming, as TinyGP is, programs can be composed of multiple components. In this case, the representation for programs used in TinyGP is a set of trees grouped together under a root node that acts as glue for everything in the tree. In the figure above, the plus node is functioning as the root node. You probably see that the negative 6 value came from multiplying together the two terminals which hold some constants. Notice there's a terminal holding x that it has a value of 0.2. If you have a keen eye, you could probably see where that 0.2 came from. But also note that there are ellipses both above and below the 0.2. This means that a whole set of values will roll through x here. Some which came before 0.2 was the value of x, and some which shall come after 0.2 was the value of x. We'll come back to this later when we talk about the overall fitness of a program. But for now, just notice that the negative 6 and the 0.2 are added together to give the overall value of negative 5.8 for this program in its current state. Thus, you can see how the output of a subtree becomes input for the overall tree. Let's move on to the next header constituent, we've already shown that whatever constants we use, these will be limited to a range, but here we will actually stipulate how many random constants will indeed be available for selection 
into a given program. Note that the header declares this number to be 100. TinyGP will shuffle in 100 random numbers into an array with a range of negative 5 to positive 5. And then, when there are terminals in the tree that need constants, TinyGP will randomly grab constants from its constant array and put them where needed. In the tree we've been using, we see that the first array element was randomly selected and a number 2 was placed into the terminal of the tree. And the fifth array element was later selected and a number negative 3 was placed into a terminal of the tree. Let's look at the final header constituent. This value stipulates the number of variables the system should use. It's probably easiest to see what this means if we were to construct a new file where this value was changed and then see what required changes would be needed elsewhere in the problem.dat file. Let's rename our original file problema.dat. In a moment we'll create a new file and call it problemb.dat. Notice that the first column of problem a dat is the x variable, which should give us the second column, which is f of x. It turns out that f of x is the sine function. We want tiny gp to look at the x and f of x values for each fitness case line and then evolve a program that would match these values. But what if we wanted a function with more than one input? Here's where we introduce our new file, problem b dat. Note that it has two columns, one for each variable named x1 and x2, and there's still a target for which we want to evolve a program. So the first constituent in the header tells us how many input fields we'll need for the variables which get fed into an evolved program. Naturally, as you need more variables for a function, you'd add more columns. Notice that when we increase the number of variables the system should use, we see more complex trees as a result. Here there's opportunity, though not a necessity, for two variables to appear in our trees, and maybe even multiple times. And once again we see the ellipses, which indicate that fitness case values have come earlier into the tree, and more shall come later too and be run through the tree eventually as a way of determining this program's overall fitness. Keep in mind that there are 100,000 programs running in a standard tiny GP launch and that this tree represents only the third of 63 stages, one for each fitness case, that this single program will have to go through before its overall fitness can be assessed. We'll cover how TinyGP calculates fitness in a later video.